Hey guys, welcome back to our channel Project Vagrant where we bring you new van life content every single week. My name is Joey and in this week's video I'm going to show you guys me wiring up our van electrical system and I'm also going to do some voiceover talking about fuse and wire size, why they're important and what can happen if you get them wrong. Let's get on into it. I've been sitting here staring at this wall trying to figure out how I want to mount all of our electrics and I think at this point I'm just going to go for it. Uh, I think I'm going to put my two bus bars here which is going to be kind of a pain because there's not going to be, because I'm going to put the inverter here and I'm going to have to kind of direct the cables through this weird route to the rest of our electrical here. But I think it's basically our best choice at this point and I've just been staring and not coming up with anything else. So I think we're just going to go for it. As always, all products used in this video will be linked in the description. This is the first layout I came up with. I quickly realized this layout was not going to work. The first issue was that I mounted the inverter vertically. Renogy recommends you do not do this because something could fall into the fans. With proper precautions, I think this could work, but it was easy enough for me to just rotate it. This line is where the bed frame will start. There would actually be no space for me to run cables to the positive bus bar here. I decided to move the negative bus bar somewhere down here. If I move the negative bus bar, I'm gonna need space between this DC to DC charger and the wall for cables to run. So this will need to be moved slightly away from the wall. I'm going to talk about ampacity and how you use it to determine wire size and what can happen if you put too many amps through a wire that is too thin. Ampacity is the maximum current in amps that a wire can safely handle while also considering the maximum combined length of the negative and positive cable without dropping too much voltage to power your device. The two things that determine ampacity is the current that the device uses, which is measured in amps, and the length of the positive and negative cables combined. Before I explain the relation between the wire gauge and the current, let me iterate that the gauge sizing system is kind of backwards. The lower the gauge, the thicker the cable is, and the higher the gauge, the thinner the cable is. For example, 4 gauge wire is much thicker than 12 gauge. Because it can get confusing, from here on, I am just going to say that a cable needs to be thicker or thinner instead of lower or higher gauge. The higher the current, and the longer the positive and negative cables are, the thicker the cable needs to be. It is okay to use a thicker wire than required, but it is never okay to use a thinner wire than required. Why is that? Well, I made a visual representation that I hope will help you understand. Please note this example is purely hypothetical and numbers are thrown together to best explain what is going on here. Imagine these copper circles are cross sections of wire. 8 gauge wire on the left and 10 gauge wire on the right. Now let's say we are connecting a device that pulls 30 amps to each of these. And let's say 8 gauge wire can handle 30 amps, but the 10 gauge wire cannot. The red dots represent those 30 amps. Notice how on the 8 gauge wire, none of the dots are touching. What happens if you put too much current through a thin wire is happening on the right. The electrons are constantly rubbing against each other. You can see by the overlapping black parts. This creates friction which ends up producing heat and can start a fire. How does the length of the positive and negative cables play a role in this? Well, the longer the cable is, the more the voltage will drop over that distance. Say you start with 12.9 volts at one end of a cable and you run it 60 feet. If your cable's not thick enough, you may only be getting 11 volts at the end of the cable, which would not be able to power a 12 volt device. Now that's just an example. While voltage drop does not have a risk of fire, it is best to maintain a three to 5% voltage drop for devices that are deemed critical. Think your inverter, your solar charge controller, water pump, things like that. A 10% voltage drop is usually okay for devices that are not as critical. Think your lights, um, your vent fan. Luckily, you do not have to do a bunch of math to figure out exactly which size wire you need for your length or amperage because there are plenty of 12 volt ampacity charts available online. I recommend you check out West Marine's chart and there will be a link in the description. I hope you now understand why wire size matters and the risks of not taking it seriously. For your general 12 volt devices, 
think your lights, your fans, your charging sockets, etc., I recommend just buying a big spool of red and black 12 gauge wire. 12 gauge wire can handle up to 20 amps at a total length of 30 feet, which is more than any single device I am using requires and is cheaper than buying tons of shorter lengths of different gauge wire. As I stated before, you can always go thicker than needed, but never thinner. For your inverter, charge controller, etc., you will want to size the wires up separately. Now that you understand what happens when you put too much current through a wire, let's talk about what a fuse or breaker's function is and then how to choose the correctly braided fuse or breaker for your wire. A fuse is designed to break a circuit's connection when too much current is ran through the wire. Fuse or breaker's function is just to protect your wire. Generally, an overcurrent situation is caused by a short circuit. A short circuit is where a negative and positive wire makes contact where it shouldn't and completes the circuit, hence the term short circuit. If this begins and the wire is not protected by a fuse or breaker, your wiring will begin heating up and a fire can start. You should have a fuse on every positive cable in your electrical system. The closer to the battery, the better. A breaker or a circuit breaker does the exact same thing as a fuse, but instead of physically breaking, it has a switch that opens up when there is more current than the breaker is rated for. These are handy because with a fuse, you have to actually replace it when it's broken, but with the breaker, you simply reset it. On Amazon, I've noticed a lot of circuit breakers are labeled as fuses. The main advantage of using a fuse over a breaker is that they disrupt the connection faster than a breaker, which makes it less likely to damage any of your electrical components. It is personal preference on what you use. Just be careful when designing your electrical system so that there are no cables exposed and nothing can easily move or fall into your system and, and create a short circuit. I use only circuit breakers except for my DC fuse box, which uses plain fuses like you'd see in a car. So to reiterate, a fuse or breaker's main function is to protect your wiring, not your devices. So how do you size your fuse or breaker? First, you'll want to figure out how many amps your wire size can handle using this chart. Please note, this is not considering voltage drop or length of cable, as it does not matter here, so this will not match the chart we looked at earlier. So let's use my circuit for my alternator charger as an example. It has roughly 30 feet of cable total, and the current the charger uses is 40 amps. So I used 4 gauge wires to connect it. 120 amps is the maximum current a 4 gauge wire can safely handle. From here, you have two options. You can either size for your wire's maximum current in amps, which in my example would be 120 amps, or you can size the fuse for the amount of current you were expecting the circuit to use with an additional 25%. You can calculate that by multiplying your expected current by 1.25. In this example, it would be 50 amps, which is why I use a 50 amp inline breaker on both sides of my alternator charger. You may not be able to find a fuse for the exact amount you calculate. Just use whatever is closest as long as it is not higher than the cable can handle or lower than the expected current. Either one will work and protect your wiring. Never use a fuse or breaker that is rated higher than what your wire can handle. All right, guys, that's a wrap for this video. I hope you learned something. I hope that everything was clear and concise and the visual representations I made helped a lot because I put a lot of time into them. If you have any suggestions uh, or th comments on how I could improve, leave them below. If you found any value in this video, hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up. I put a lot of work into this one and we'll catch you guys next week. See ya.